power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom. The power, the power of, of the, the heart. heart, finding the power of the heart. Power of the heart. The power. The power of the heart. Power of the heart. Let us learn to discover new energy. The power of the heart. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Yu Ru Chao. You are tuning in to the Power of the Heart on Dai Radio. Forty years ago, when a young man from Taiwan went to Jordan to teach martial arts to the country's royal family, he never knew that one day Jordan will be home to him. He went speaking neither English or Arabic. This is Mr. Chen Chouhua's story. In Jordan, for many years now, Mr. Chen has friends at all levels of society. Fluent in Arabic, he acts as a bridge between rich and poor. Polite but determined, with an always smiling face, Mr. Chen has a way of getting people to volunteer with Ziqi. One of them is a wholesaler named Jamir. He would deliver goods to the south of the country. Hundreds of kilometers away from Amman, the capital, where his business is, and accept no payment for the gasoline whenever Ziqi needed relief aid delivered. Prince Hassan, uncle of the current king of Jordan, said they call Mr. Chen a gentle giant because he has wisdom in his head and compassion in his heart, while being very strong. And having a high grade in martial arts, in Jordan, city volunteers have helped tribes in the desert, often living in poor conditions and lack of running water and electricity for more than ten years now. Recently, with the influx of Syrian refugees, city volunteers have provided emergency relief to them and taken some refugee families into long-term hardship assistance program. Becoming a vegetarian was not easy for Mr. Chen in a country with a meat-based diet and very few vegetables. Thanks to his wife, he eats a variety of healthy vegetarian dishes at home. He said that the food always tastes great because his wife prepared it. He even said, "Whatever she makes, it is always the best. All husbands should learn from me." He said. This is Mr. Chen, a martial arts teacher who becomes the pioneer of Ziqi in Jordan. In our program today, we'll begin with a reading of Master Chen Yan's teaching on life economics, about from dots to lines to pines. This reading is provided by Mr. Colin Lagerton. Then, after a short break, we'll discuss this teaching with Mr. Chen Chouhua. Back to the power of the heart. Section two, from dots to lines to planes. Many years ago, I had a conversation with an elder in southern Taiwan that I still remember vividly. The elder said to me, "Master, I have a feeling that Suji will one day become the largest family in the world." I asked him what made him think so. He said, "Because Suji's heart is very big, and its love is truly great. You live in Hualien, yet when disaster strikes southern Taiwan, you come here immediately to help the victims as if they were your own family. With this mindset, I believe that all of Taiwan will be one big Suji family. When we unite with one heart, get along harmoniously, love one another, and work together in concert." All volunteers are as one family. We should treat everyone in the world like family members, love all living beings, and contribute selflessly. If we expand and broaden our love, not only in Taiwan but across the world, then is it not true that the entire world is one big family? 
Take from the community and give back to the community. With the convenience of modern travel, many Taiwanese have moved abroad to develop their businesses. Quite a few of them had already joined Siji before they left and wanted to maintain this love for Siji. Some of them told me before their departure, Master, I can leave everything behind, but I must take with me the seeds of Siji. They vowed to sow the... Master, I can leave everything behind, but I must take with me the seeds of Siji. They vowed to sow Siji seeds wherever they went. I always advise them, when you develop your business in a foreign land, you employ local workers and use local resources, so you must give back to the community. And as the old saying goes, better a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. You should create good affinities with the locals. Take the initiative to love them and make them feel that you are friendly and approachable. Then you will be loved. They took my advice to heart and put it into practice. Gradually, they have spread Siji's great love all over the world. Many people who do Siji work outside of Taiwan follow this principle. They take from the community and give back to the community. They raise funds locally and do charitable works locally. For instance, Siji volunteers in the Philippines often provide free clinics to remote or impoverished areas. For more than 10 years, they have helped many needy people by relieving their suffering. There was a cataract patient who had not been able to see clearly for a long time. At one of the free clinics, he underwent surgery. The next day, after the doctor removed the gauze from his eyes, he was so happy to have regained eyesight that he said, I want to announce to all Filipinos that Chinese people are very good to us. They help us. Please do not rob or kidnap the Chinese. At that time, the Philippines had many social problems due to economic and social disparity. There had been many cases of Chinese being kidnapped. Therefore, helping others is in fact helping and protecting oneself. When we love others, others will naturally love us in return. Once a Siji volunteer called me from South Africa and said, Master, I have decided to close my factory here. I asked, Why do you want to close the factory when your business is doing well? He replied, Robberies and arsons are frequent in South Africa. It is difficult to keep the factory operating. Racial confrontation in South Africa had existed for a long time, and riots broke out quite often during that period of time. Local people did not like Chinese, so many Chinese were robbed and their houses were set on fire. I said, why were they robbed? Why were their houses set on fire? It was because those people took advantage of the local labor and resources, but enjoyed the profit by themselves. The local workers had been earning low wages for a long time. They lived in poverty and felt that they had been treated unfairly, so they reacted with violence. If those merchants could not only take from the community, but also give back to the community by giving workers reasonable benefits and making local living standards more balanced, then their own lives would become more secure. I also told him a true story that happened in the United States. A Tsuji member emigrated to the United States from Kaohsiung, Taiwan and started a bakery business. The city he lived in was mired in racial riots at the time. One day, he drove his car to deliver bread downtown when he was suddenly stopped by a group of armed African-American rioters. They asked him, Are you Japanese or Korean? He replied in fear, I am Taiwanese. The group changed their attitude right away. They told him gently to avoid downtown and showed him a safe route to quickly drive home. The city member was curious about the incident, so upon returning to his store, he asked a female African-American employee why he was spared. She told him, We are grateful to the Taiwanese for improving our lives and helping with our children's education by providing scholarships, so we all agreed not to attack or rob Taiwanese. He asked, Who are the Taiwanese that have helped you? She replied, Tsuji. Tsuji people from Taiwan helped us. The man was so pleased to hear this that he quickly called his friend in Taiwan who was a Tsuji commissioner. He said, I am calling you today to thank you because Tsuji USA saved my life. In the past, I thought that donating money was to help others, but I learned today that it was also to help myself. I will continue to donate. Tsuji volunteers in the United States raise money locally to help local underprivileged children. They contribute to the locals under the name Taiwan Buddhist Tsuji Foundation. Because of that, 
the locals not only recognize Suji, but also Taiwan. This is a testimony of how we benefit from the love we give. After hearing this story, the Suji commissioner in South Africa said to me, I know what I should do. From then on, he worked hard to introduce Suji and its spirit to Taiwanese businessmen there. He also started to help and care for the locals and influence the locals to volunteer with Suji and pass on that love and care. Taking a journey of 10,000 miles. A proverb states, traveling 10,000 miles is better than reading 10,000 books. Each year we hold an event where participants jog from Hualien Suji General Hospital to the Jingsa abode. The sight of people jogging always reminds me that if people do not move their feet forward, they will never reach the Jingsa abode. Once we set our goal, we must move forward. However much time we spend advancing forward, that is how far we will go and how much we will see. In January 2002, Indonesia was hit by several days of continuous downpour. Jakarta was flooded and the Anka River did not recede for more than a month. Jakarta is the country's capital and economic center and is surrounded by many poverty-stricken communities. The flooding was so severe, how could the people in those communities carry on with their lives? Old Mr. Huang, a successful entrepreneur in Jakarta, came to Taiwan to see me. I told him, if the floodwater does not recede for a long time, there will be sanitation problems. Infectious diseases may spread, which affect not just the poor. The consequences will be unimaginable. The rich should take care of the poor. Those who are able should extend a helping hand to the flood victims. We must support one another in this world. Mr. Huang was compassionate and felt the same way. He was willing to provide help, but did not know how to do it. I proposed a five-part plan pumping out water, cleaning up the disaster area, sanitizing the area, holding free clinics, and building a great love village. While assessing the damage and caring for the victims, we had to pump out the water as quickly as possible and clean up the area. These two things needed to be done at the same time, because it would be more difficult to clean up the area after it had dried out, but doing both concurrently required a great many people. As Mr. Huang was a very influential figure in Indonesia, I asked him to call on the government to dispatch soldiers and policemen and mobilize local residents to do it together. Sanitizing the environment and providing free clinics then followed to prevent infectious diseases. Since this area was prone to flooding every time there were heavy rains, the long-term solution was to demolish all the illegally constructed buildings along the river and to dredge out the mud and garbage from the river. The illegal constructions along the river had existed for a long time. Since it was not easy to make a living in rural villages, many villagers had come to look for work in the capital city. Unfortunately, many could not land jobs and ended up homeless. Little by little, these people came to settle along the Anka River. The river had been 70 meters wide, but was reduced to a mere 10 meters due to illegal construction increased population, and the dumping of garbage. The environment had become extremely dirty, leaving the river choked with garbage, and this overloaded river led to frequent flooding in the area. Understanding the problem, Suji volunteers in Jakarta decided to dredge the river. Not only did they finish the first four parts of the five-part plan within two weeks, they also actively went out and looked for land to build permanent housing for the displaced residents. With assistance and support from the local government, a parcel of land on the outskirts of the capital was allocated for a great love village. In order to dismantle the shanty town, the government subsidized rental costs for residents and persuaded them to move away from the river banks. The government was able to instill confidence in them to accept the moving arrangement. As soon as the great love village was constructed, these people started to move into their beautiful new homes. Indonesian Suji volunteers also set up job training centers in the village to provide villagers with skills with which they could make a living, such as sewing and cooking. The volunteers also taught them to recycle, and the villagers began to make and sell doormats of discarded carpets. In doing so, not only was discarded material reused, the residents' lives were improved as well. In addition to homes and job skills, education was vital. The Tsuji Primary School and High School were built in the Great Love Village. These schools taught good manners to the local children, 
transforming them into little ladies and gentlemen. As these children participated in various competitions, they began to rack up numerous achievements. It is hard to imagine that in only three short years, the villagers' living situation had changed so dramatically. A few years later, Suji high school teachers in Taiwan took their students to Indonesia for a cultural exchange. Many students already knew this story of the Anke River, but even though they had seen video clips of the filthy environment and barefoot children with runny noses and shabby clothing, the Taiwanese children remained skeptical. Is it real? they asked. Are there really people living like this in today's world? Since stretching the Anke River was such a mammoth project, it had been implemented in phases, so some shanty houses were still standing at that time. The teachers decided to take their students to the Anke River to experience the filthy environment and the life of the children they had seen in the video. The students also visited the newly built Great Love Village. The village students attending Siji schools wore neat uniforms like their counterparts from Taiwan, and they also studied hard in school. During the visit, each of the local students hosted one Siji student from Taiwan. The Taiwanese students interacted with their host families to experience local culture and customs. They witnessed a piece of history and saw with their own eyes the transformation of these poor children. The Anka River story shows that with good karma and blessings, we have an opportunity to change destiny. Hello everyone, my name is Chen Xiu Hua. I am from Jordan. My favorite Jin Shi Ethra is the regret is the biggest punch man in life. Before I joined the Chiji, I always thank him. I give him every year I come home, I give him my money to my mother. I think this is the best way to save service to my mother. Until my mother passed away, I realized I miss so much. This is one. And second one, when I work in the Chiji, in the beginning, I don't have much experience. You know, I tried to save one old lady. He was got a lump in her face. He's 95 years old. One day he was asking me, can you give me one blanket? I was mentioned, I said, okay, next month I will print the blanket for you. Uh, that time I'm not good enough as a Chiji member then, because the distance is very far. So, you know, second month I print the blanket to her, she already passed away. So for that reason, I practice how to our master say, keep the time in the meanings and the many wisdom and the inspiration be with you always. You are listening to the power of the heart. Our special guest today is Mr. Chen Chiu Hua. He's a Taekwondo Naidan trainer. He trains Lake King Husan and all the royal family of Jordan. Now he is with the Prince Hassan and his family. He brought Taekwondo to Jordan in 1974. This is the 40th year. 
Welcome to the program, Chouhua. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. How did you meet Si Ji? Ah,、uh, actually, in the 1997, the fourth,、uh, our sister brought Si Ji from Indonesia to Jordan, and he's Madam of Ambassador of Taiwan. In that time,、um, this is not correct in the people, but. Uh, uh, Unluckily, you know, we don't know what the meaning of Cici. We because he was the only the member. He's not commissioned. No, he's never been under training for the as volunteer. So in that time, we only participating to wasting the poor people and provide their food only. Then in the nineteen ninety eight, I came back to join the, the Da Ai TV opening. In that time, I was.、Uh, They were surprised I, because I didn't realize this organization so big and、uh, and everybody have a uniform. I don't. It's the first time I saw have a uniform. We don't know the uniform at all. So then, nineteen ninety eight, the sister who in charge, unfortunately he just sick and passed away. Then they say, okay, brother, you will be in charge of this city office in Amman. Then I say, okay. But I still doesn't know what the meaning is. I came back. The master asking me, "Do you have a tip? Do you go to visit the poor?" Yes, he says. I say yes. He says,、oh, "Why don't we pop up?" I say, "I need to be pop back." Really? Then I say that time I say no. I should be come back to join the, the seminar. Then I will realize what is really meaning. So in two thousand. I refused to participate in the member of the seminar. Then, in that day, our master Zheng Yan, he was、uh, we have、uh, the Bon Anno donation the ceremony. He was mentioned how difficult to open this bank. The commander of the marine invited me for dinner. It was、uh, so many drink. I said, "No, I'm stop drinking." Before you go to a party, you are drunk. But after one week, you are completely changed. I say yes. I find my way. Every morning, I clean the TV and the cassette to follow the master to pray,、mm, to pray. And even my wife was a little surprised. He was say, "What's going on?" Before ten days, we make a party for him. Go to Taiwan, then come back. He start pray. He don't drink. He don't this. this. Then he ask my assistant to ask him. He say, "Teacher." What's going on? I said, What's going on? He said,、uh, Madam, your wife afraid you going to, to be a monk. I said, I said, No, no, no. I will not be the monk. But I find my life, my where I'm going now. Nobody training me. I only copy in the Thai TV. You know, practice and、uh, I. I always、uh, believe. Deeply believe our master, and、uh, I trust all the member of the Cici member. I, I find that I'm really complete the newborn life. I have、um, before, you know, like the Taekwondo trainer master. They always、uh, to be a hero, but now I learn how to humble, you know, how to helping the people. Our master teaching us, taught us, you know, is not only. With distribution food, it's most important how to campaign them, because how to pass the love. Like now, Syrian they are they become refugee now. They was a very peaceful country, but now they everything is gone. So they came to Jordan. Of course, when the beginning we have an emergency relief, we provide the food. Long term now we take care seventy one family. Okay. And.、Uh, One camp have a three hundred family, and also the inside have two school. The seventy one family will provide emergency aid. The monthly give their pocket money and the meal and the voucher for shopping. And in the camp, we time by time we provide food, but mainly we take care of the the two school because they already out almost a year now. The children they cannot go to school, so the teacher, a Syrian teacher, they open the school, 
So you know, so we take care of all facility, and uh, we even we provide the teacher. We don't call it the salary. We is one of the support. In Siji, we try to support them to be better. To our master, very concerned. Education is the future. Yeah, one sixteen years boy, his food is rotten. Uh, the doctor with our board organization take care of him. Then that time I really worry. I said, can we take over to take care of this patient? Luckily, I have one student. My one taekwondo student, he came to me. He come to thanks to me, twenty five years ago. You support me go to the medical university. I said, really? I said, okay. Then he said, I said, what do you study? He said, I'm bung doctor. Hey, just the Buddha sent this doctor to me. Then I show him the X-ray. I said, please start this. He's a teacher. This no problem. Come to me. I save this ball I lack. Of course, I rather draw down. They say, why are you helping Shilian? You spend so much money. I say no. I don't care. In our organization, we don't care. Who are you? No nationality. Even you, then, one of my students know my way. He explained to them. He said, even. Mr. Chen will help in Israel. His enemy, he will help. Please join us next time to continue our discussion on life economics. If you want to read this book we're talking about, you can find a copy of this book in any Jingsi Bookstore and Cafe. For more teaching from Dharma Master Zheng Yan, please tune in next time to our program. Goodbye and have a great day. From life's past, in this life we meet again. Call it luck, call it coincidence. We meet our match in the six pence. Because this life we meet. Again, all those troubles I don't mind. What was set in motion suits me fine. Let love guide us again this time. Searching everywhere, our memory was waiting there from bits and pieces. Comes the hope of our love. Again, this time you're from far away. I come from Neverland. Can't find a word to say. No need to lift a hand. Searching everywhere, our memory was waiting.